Welcome to Modern Marketing Messages, the leading podcast discussing the latest and greatest in both online and offline marketing tactics, strategies, and trends. I'm your host, Taylor Karg, marketing content writer at AmericanEagle.com. Today, we're going to talk about how to use AI to solve digital marketing challenges. AI is transforming the way we do business, and digital marketing is no exception. So to dig deeper into this topic, I have here with me Louis Rothkoff, Chief Revenue Officer at Parazam. Welcome, Louis. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hey, Taylor. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. And if I remember this correctly from our introductory call, you are joining from New York? New York City, correct. New York City. Awesome. So can you explain to me, Louis, just a little bit about your background and your career thus far? Yeah, so I've been in the digital marketing and media industry for the last 24 years, um, going all the way back to one of the very first uh, ad networks and then one of the very first ad servers. I sort of watched the ad tech side of the industry evolve over those past two and a half decades. Um, My career took a few turns um, in terms of specialty, spent some time on the media side, um, a bunch of time on sort of pure play ad tech. And um, with my uh, job here at Pearson, I'm really taking the foot that I put into MarTech in the past um, with two feet uh, and trying to understand and solve many of the challenges that the industry has that um, I had worked through on the advertising side, on the supply side, and and now get to work um, right where the dollars are spent. Um, And it's, it's really great to be able to bring that ad tech history, that media history um, into a MarTech company that's doing some really cool things. Yeah, that's awesome. It seems like you have obviously had a lot of experience over the years in this industry, kind of diving headfirst into all different kinds of aspects. So I'm interested to hear your take on, you know, artificial intelligence and how it's been shaping the industry currently and in the future. Such a good question. And It'll take an hour to answer, so I'll, I'll, I'll give the sort of quick notes version of it, and, and um, then we could probe further. So it's probably worth beginning with the definition of, of what AI is, and, and if there is a definition, I don't know it. Um, as relates to marketing, we've talked about terms in the past like machine learning and algorithms, and smart algorithms, and all of those together do make up the form of AI that the marketing industry uses. Essentially, marketers care about selling more product and having it cost them less money to sell that product, right? So increase their return on ad spend, increase basket size, and just decrease cost uh, of that sale. And AI and marketing is able to wrangle really large pools of data to make the sorts of associations and connections within the data that many companies either don't do or that they're doing with you know, a team of five analysts and an Excel sheet. Um, which, you know, is obviously suboptimal. So to harness the marketer's most important and most precious asset, that is first-party data, you need a very, very competent and comprehensive AI that is able to work through that data and make those connections faster and more comprehensively than any human analyst would be able to do using a, a spreadsheet. Yeah, absolutely. And I feel like, you know, your answer to that pairs nicely with my next question, which is, can you just explain a little bit about, you know, the company you work for, Parazon? What is it? How do you guys use AI? Yeah, so Parazon is a relatively new entrant um, to the market. Uh, We began our business in Israel and Europe and are uh, bringing it to North America now as we speak. Um, Parazon does two things uh, really well. The first is to predict through the use of AI which of a marketer's consumers are most likely to convert either online or offline. And the second piece, which is really a corollary to that, is um, what is the impact that my online advertising is having on my in-store sales? So quick, uh, you know, back, back to history for a moment. One of the challenges that marketers have been facing with digital advertising from the beginning is understanding which of their marketing is working and where and why. Um, The dirty little secret uh, that I think everybody sort of believes uh, and knows in their heart is that the internet was not designed for advertising, right? The the technology behind it, the structures behind it were not uh, designed to be able to understand consumer behavior, show them the right ad, and then make sure that you take them out of the pool of contention for seeing that ad. 
um, either if they are not the right consumer uh, or if they've already bought the thing and now they're getting bombarded with the same ad for a shirt that they bought a month ago over and over and over, which just makes consumers um, unhappy. All of these have contributed to a world in which the marketer is only able to use generally um, proxy metrics uh, for understanding how their online marketing impacts their offline sales. So there are solutions that leverage um, geo-targeting uh, and geo-fencing uh, uh, to know somebody saw this ad online and they went to the store. And that's some good information, but what it's really lacking is an understanding of, well, do they go to the store or do they go to a mall that has the store in it? Or do they go to a strip mall? Do they park in one store's parking lot and decide to get their exercise that day and walk to the other store? Um, so it's very difficult to sort of get that level of specificity. Um, you certainly can't understand um, basket behavior and skew level data if what you're doing for offline tracking is, is really geo-based. Um, we do it a bit differently. Um, we plug directly into the marketer's transaction logs. So we have direct in their POS system, their first party data that describes who's buying what, where are they buying it, how much are they buying, where, you know, what other products they're buying alongside the first one. Um, and so that you are able to track all the way down to, you know, user one, two, three saw this ad via SMS or saw this ad on Facebook. And then within the first week, they went to the store and they actually bought the thing. Oh, and by the way, they also bought this other thing too. So maybe we should have those two things physically close to each other on the retail store shelf, or, you know, let's recommend that as you're making a purchase online. And so understanding um, how your online advertising is converting online um, is relatively straightforward and easy. And, you know, by this point, pretty much everybody can do it. Understanding what your online advertising is doing to your retail sales, to your in-store sales, um, is really challenging. Uh, and it's, it's kind of what we uh, built our business on and the, the, the path that we're going down. Again, predicting which of those consumers are most likely to convert is the result of us applying very sophisticated AI to the data that's coming from the marketer. Um, the marketer's first party data is the most precious resource that they have. Um, and we've seen that many marketers are not taking full advantage and not exploiting it to its fullest. Um, there is a way, is what we're saying, to be respectful of privacy and to be compliant with privacy regulations and at the same time, be able to show users more relevant ads and bring down the marketer's uh, return uh, cost of doing business and increase their return on ad spend um, as a result of making smarter, more informed decisions about who to target. Wow, it sounds like the companies, you know, found a gap in the market and is really going to, you know, capitalize on that and help businesses. So that's awesome. And I'm excited to, you know, further in the episode, learn more about, you know, some of the like key customers you guys have had, you know, without naming them or just any some key success stories too. So we'll get to that later, but I'm very interested to hear more. Absolutely. So jumping right in, what are the most significant digital marketing challenges that businesses currently face and how is AI positioned to solve those challenges? Yeah, so I'm a CMO at a big retail chain or a mid-sized retail chain. The problem is I don't know if it's working and I don't really know how to know if it's working for the reasons we talked about, right? Very challenging to run a business based upon proxy metrics and old outdated metrics like cost per click and click through rate. I mean, these are all things that we used in 1999 <laughs> um, and they were imperfect measures then. Yeah. And it's sort of crazy to me that the industry has not evolved beyond that at scale, you still have marketers that are and, and agencies that are looking at campaign performance through the window of you know completed views or clicks. And of course, we all know as, as practitioners that there is basically no correlation between video completion and uh, online sales or in-store sales. So clearly, we have to redefine how we are looking at success and performance in the industry. The only real way to do that is using deterministic data. Um, and again, marketers have this like unbelievably rare and precious resource called their first party data that permits them to solve these challenges and understand what's working and not working and build upon what is working using deterministic data matching, right? So there's no probabilistic magic. There's no proxying. There's no like, well, they came to the mall, but we're not really sure if they came to the store, but we'll give them credit. Anyhow, um, that's all sort of yesterday and didn't work particularly well yesterday. Anyhow, mm -hmm. um, using AI to understand 
you know, what are behaviors that are that um, customers like this tend to exhibit when they purchase in store um, based on what we've seen as this person's behavior using different methodologies like reach and frequency and um, uh, sorry, recency, frequency and monetary value um, enables marketers to understand a true um, waterfall from here are my best customers. These are the ones who they're going to come to the store and they're going to buy it, whatever. So I don't really have to spend too much marketing to them. All the way on the bottom, you've got your people who are just like decayed, um, who maybe bought a year ago and, and haven't bought since then. And like, we can't even really call them customers anymore. We really have to reactivate them. And then everybody in between as the AI sort of segments using the RFM model um, is varying degrees of existing customer who has lapsed, existing customer who comes a couple times a month. We'd love for them to come, you know, a couple times a week. And with that segmentation, you're able to make a really intelligent um, decision about where your advertising is, to whom you're advertising, um, how it's working, and do all that in real time and do it while your campaigns are in flight. Because the other problem marketers have had is they run a campaign and then maybe they'll run a research survey. Um, maybe they'll run a brand lift study on the campaign to see, you know, is it working? But by the time that happens, the campaign is typically over. Um, or at least it's not enough time left to uh, make any changes that would have an impact on the overall success of the campaign. Um, and so being able to have those audiences generate and kind of float in and out in real time is, is absolutely critical. Um, I mentioned something earlier about uh, we should take consumers out of the targeting pool when they bought the thing. I mean, how many times have you been online and you're sort of searching for I don't know, a refrigerator? And you're like, this is awesome. I love this refrigerator, had it delivered. And you're going to see refrigerator ads for like the next six months, which is crazy because you just bought a refrigerator. You're not going to buy another one. Yeah, in it's not like a pair of shoes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, you know, any dollars that you're, sp that you're spending on users who already bought the product are literally waste. Now, maybe you should market them something different. Like maybe you should market them... Um, I don't know, like an ice maker attack. I, like I live in an apartment in New York City. I have no idea what real refrigerators are like. Yeah, right. So maybe there's like <laughs> there's like some attachment you can buy for your refrigerator that makes it more valuable. Let's show them that ad yeah. rather than showing them an ad for the thing that that they already bought. And this is important for a few reasons. Number one, you've got the consumer burnout effect of seeing things over and over and over, even though you've done it. And again, like you're just you're not spending your money most wisely. So you could pour over all of your data, again, with spreadsheets and 10 analysts, and, right? Or you could leverage the power of artificial intelligence and augmented intelligence to be able to get actionable insights from predictive analytics on what's working, what's not working, and, and how can we make this work a bit better? Yeah, that all, I mean, it sounds like there's a lot of benefits to using AI in your digital marketing. And I that was going to be my next question, but I feel like you just kind of hit on all of the the benefits to using it. So on the flip side, what are some of the challenges that you've noticed, you know, throughout, you know, working at Parazon or the rest of your career that businesses are having with AI and digital marketing? So the state of AI and marketing today is not a hands-free car, right? You're not sitting in the front seat and hands off the wheel and watching a TV show <laughs> or talking to your friend. Like, you still have to be there. You still have to know what's going on and you have to harness the AI in the correct way. Um, it's kind of more like a car that suggests based upon really, really, really super smart computers. I think you should take this route. I think you should stop off for gas. I think there's something up with the engine. Um, but I, I need you, the human, to go make actions on those insights. Um, go take action on it. And I think just as marketers can make a big mistake by not leveraging AI in their decision making, taking it too far to the opposite extreme and treating it like a completely set it and forget it self-driving car is not, we're, we're just not there. Um, and I, given the science behind marketing and the art involved in marketing, I don't think we're ever going to get to a place where it is 100% set it and forget it. I think there's still going to be a human sitting at the wheel making these decisions um, and finding that balance between I'm 100% self-sufficient. I don't need no computer to help me. And I'm going to, you know, like Jesus take the wheel. Um, there's a happy medium between those two. And I think that's where smart marketers are, are sort of landing. 
Yeah, absolutely. I love the idea of, you know, finding a way to combine the human touch with the artificial intelligence. I think there's, like you said, always going to be a need for a human behind it, especially in terms of marketing and even, you know, myself as a content writer. Yeah, there are things that I can, you know, plug into an AI learning machine like ChatGPT or Bard or something, but there's always going to need to be that human touch within, you know, an article or even any piece of content, really. So yeah, I can definitely see what you're talking about there. And, and like, you know, not to get off topic, but like, it's pretty obvious when you have AI write something. Yeah, like, yeah. There's this, there's this sort of like AI glow or something that you see when it puts pictures together. Like you can just look at it and be like, yeah, it's AI. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you need like you need that human um, interaction, or, or you sort of end up in like the uncanny valley of robots doing the work, but they're not quite human, and it's yeah. not quite a hundred percent correct. Um, yeah. So that's why you know you you have to have a team of. of software engineers or the company that you hired to manage this for you have to have a team of data scientists and software engineers who are able to harness learnings from data, but still present them in a way that the CMO, the director of marketing, the VP of marketing can look at it and say, yeah, let's stop showing the refrigerator ad to the guy who bought the refrigerator a month ago. Let's not waste money. But, you know, now we have this knowledge that he bought a refrigerator a month ago. Like there's got to be something else we can sell him. Yeah. And you know, through the use of AI, we're able to show people who bought a refrigerator are very, very closely linked to people who bought an ice maker and, you know, a lot of meat. Um, I have to get better with my examples. Yeah, we're gonna, home we're, appliance we're keep, things. We're yeah. going to keep going with it. Take this out and post. It's all good. Um, we have to, you know, make sure that we're exploiting every opportunity with not only um, new products and services, but not pissing off the consumer with stuff that they already have. And so if you see these correlations, these pairs between product that was purchased and then other people bought who bought that product also purchased, you know, XYZ. As a retailer, whether in person or online, that gives you a tremendous amount of knowledge as a jumping off point for what advertising should we buy? How should we buy it? Which channel is working best? Do people who buy refrigerators respond really, really well to SMS marketing, but not particularly well to display advertising? Again, like understanding the real things that are happening in the campaign and not having to like look through a couple of different filters and layers and kind of hope that the answer is mostly correct. Yeah, absolutely. So let's move on to discussing the ways in which AI solves these digital marketing challenges that we've been talking about. And one of the things I wanted to mention, which you have mentioned previously too, was personalization. Can you discuss the role of AI in enhancing personalization and targeting in digital marketing campaigns? Yeah, so personalization is a is a third rail, right? Because the good side of personalization is I bought a fridge and now I'm seeing the ad for you know the the ice maker. The bad part of personalization is there's this famous story where um, uh, someone's parents found out that their child was pregnant um, before the child knew uh, their adult child um, because they went to the store and they purchased things that somebody who might be pregnant um, purchases. And then they sent a mailer uh, to the person's home and said, congratulations on your pregnancy. Here are all the things you should buy. Now, I oh my gosh, <laughs> it did terrifying, right? And like, I don't know if that story is true or if it's apocryphal, but it's exactly the sort of thing that people worry about yeah. for good reason when they hear things like hyper-targeting and, and personalized marketing. So clearly, again, it's about striking that balance. Let's not be creepy, yeah, right? Like right. let's not, you know, let's not do this. So let's not personalize in categories that are so sensitive that nobody wants you personalizing in those categories. But at the same time, let's make advertising relevant to you um, and let's leverage the AI um, to understand, well, what is relevant and pick out things that some you know, human operator may not have known, right? Maybe there is a correlation between people who buy refrigerators and then people who go to the menswear department and buy a new shirt. <laughs> um, but like, I don't know, but the AI does. Yeah. And then, you know, leveraging that knowledge to continually make our campaign smarter and smarter and smarter. I think that's the best um, application of AI to the marketing space right now. And it ties all the way back to what we talked about at the beginning with digital advertising being a very large but imperfect beast. If we start to understand what this online advertising and messaging is doing to in-store sales, well, now all of a sudden that hole that appeared for retailers who had online businesses but saw no data 
or estimated data on what's happening in store. Well, now they have a completely direct connection to what's happening online is making an impact offline. And it gives retailers, in-store retailers, the same access to tools and information and, and decision-making um, that their uh, counterparts on the e-commerce only side have had for years and years. Right, right. How does the AI help marketers, in a sense, you know, rescue campaigns or, you know, help them figure out what's working, what's not working, where can I reallocate my resources to? The numbers are going to tell the truth, right? So, so AI in marketing is, I think, by nature, a very quantitative thing. Right. Um, it is a very precise thing, right? Like AI in marketing, with exceptions, is not really being used to create campaigns, to write all the copy, right? It's a tool that's at your disposal, both on the creative and generative side, but also on the you know back office analytics, predictive analytics. Um, so understanding where it can be helpful and where it isn't as helpful is, is critically important. And I think, again, it, it comes down to those insights and realizations from all of this. And you think about it, right? You're a big retailer and you've got, I don't know, millions of transactions a month taking place between online and offline. And you've got 100 stores. And each of those stores sells 10,000 different SKUs. Um, and so now being able to go in to the store level, to the SKU level, to the individual consumer level, understand behavior. Um, maybe something just isn't selling, but an early signal to the um, uh, inappropriateness of that product is people started to buy and then that, that purchase dropped off. Or people were buying it online, but when they go into the store and they see it, they don't buy it. So those sort of like little micro insights that you can apply to your campaign um, down to the quant, you know, at, at a quantitative level again. So down to the number, here's what this person bought. Here's how much they spent. Here's what's in the basket. Here's the basket size uh, rather than having to guess. And once they have those insights, we'll make those changes to your campaign, right? Like push out a new audience to your, to your campaign, push out a new creative, change the targeting, like get the numbers in the right direction um, and again, have the, the, the comfort and the confidence that as you're doing that, you're basing it upon real world, real life, first party data, not syndicated data that someone's been harvesting across the internet for the last 10 years. No, this is your data. These are your customers. And, and frankly, it's your responsibility to maximize what that data can do for your business. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, just anything and everything with first party data right now is significantly important. So, yeah, I mean, there's there's just so much challenge in, involved in, you know, go back to your previous question, personalized marketing, personalized targeting. You know, you've got um, an increasing number of, of laws and regulations yeah. that are correctly and, and and, you know, very, very positively restricting what brands can do, what, what marketers can do, what technology companies can do with consumer data. So, you know, if you're working with first party data, it sounds obvious, but if there is repeating, you're not dealing with third party data and you are not dealing with consumers who have no idea why they're seeing personalized ads. Well, they signed up for the loyalty program and part of signing up for the loyalty program means yeah. good news. You get the kinds of offers and um, ads and sort of special messaging that you only get if you are this tier in the loyalty program. If you're the next tier in the loyalty program, well, then maybe you get a different set of messaging. So segmenting, segmenting consumers um, by, again, recency, frequency, monetary value, um, also any places they are in the loyalty program um, is a really, really smart way to personalize the marketing that you're doing, but not doing it in a creepy way. Yes, absolutely. So we talked all about you know gathering this data what are some ways so that AI can help, you know, non-experts, uh, non -expert, you know, not analytical people, maybe, you know, marketers, where we tend to not be super, you know, numbers driven. What are some ways that they can make sense of this data to measure ROI, you know, through AI? Yeah, so full disclosure, you know, I sell a marketing um, data platform. Uh, that is used as a, a CDP that is also used as a predictive analytics platform. So I am biased, right? <laughs> um, having said that, we built the platform so that any marketer is able to use all of it. 
So it's okay. exactly what you said, right? Up until this point, you have data scientists who are extremely expensive, marketing analysts, all sort of crowding around um, an Excel sheet. And, and even if it were not expensive to do that, which it is, it is highly, highly imprecise, right? Only the AI is going to be able to give you that degree of precision. Again, of course, supervised by a human. And so we didn't want the platform to be um, something that only data scientists could use. We built it to be robust enough so that you know, you're able to create custom queries and you're able to apply all of your data science know-how to it. But our like end users, our customers are typically CMO, VP of marketing, director of marketing, as well as um, marketing analysts and campaign analysts who are constantly tweaking their campaigns in market based upon what they're learning from the platform. We had somebody, um, one of our clients uh, referred to it as for morning dashboard, right? Because <laughs> now you've got all the information on your screen on in one place on how many people are buying, what are they buying, where are they buying, you know, how much did they spend last year in this store versus this year. Other tools can do that, right? And those are tools that retailers have access to, but not all in one place um, generally and not with one click to create an audience, an audience that is living and breathing and active, right? You've got to be able to pull from the audience when somebody is no longer relevant. You've got to be able to add to the audience when all of a sudden someone does something. And, and like, what is that something? I don't know. Like, I'm not a data scientist. I'm, I'm not particularly smart. But I do know that the platform is. And it can take these learnings and say, aha, there's a correlation between sunny weather and people buying t-shirts, right? Um, those are things that you, when you get out of the realm of the obvious, like that example, it's very difficult for a person to understand um, without the aid of um, artificial intelligence kind of leading the path to, this is what I think as a computer, what do you think as a marketer? Yeah, and kind of like what we talked about before, blending that you know intelligence from the computer with you know marketers' opinions and their insights and all of that. That's right. So do you have any specific, you know, use cases at Pearson that you can talk to us about just talking about, you know, maybe somebody utilizing the platform and seeing good results, bad results? You don't have to name any, you know, customer names, but, you know, just keep it very generic. Yeah. So we serve, um, we can serve any marketer that has an online um, and or in-store retail presence. Um, the verticals that we tend to work with the most are apparel, so going to a department store, fashion, et cetera, um, hospitality. So when you think about it, we don't necessarily think about hotels and airlines as in-store, but every bit of it is just the same as when you're buying apparel, right? So um, you see an ad and you stay at a hotel. Um, you see an ad and you book a flight. Well, how does the marketer know that the ad is what influenced it? If they make the purchase online, then you'll have a sense. Um, if they go to the front desk at the hotel and they buy a massage, well, that was not online. That is the result of a front desk agent upselling uh, the spa to their customers. So the hospitality industry is really fertile ground for being able to draw those kinds of insights and correlations. And then lastly is um, grocery and convenience store. We have a lot of customers um, in that category as well, um, who, again, like we typically don't think about groceries as high ticket items. The reality is groceries are very, very low margin. They're very tight margin um, in general. And so marketers have to be able to squeeze out as much performance out of their data that they can so that they're moving products from shelves onto baskets and out the door. Right. I got gotcha. you. Okay. So I want to move on to, you know, kind of the future of AI and just looking forward in your opinions. Where do you see AI and its use in digital marketing going in the future? More, um, more, <laughs> but like more, but not like a runaway train. Uh, all right. We touched on a little while ago. Um, let's be smart how we use this. Um, I don't think you're going to replace marketing writers or designers or artists. I, I just don't. Yeah. You can tell when something's made via AI, like it's got that, that sort of sheen to it whether it's visual or, or even the written word, but on the business side, right? Taking those, taking marketing, writing, taking design, taking art and putting it in front of the right people such that it is most valid, uh, valuable, um, that's only going to become more and more. And I think, you know, are you going to have a subset of marketers who 
have been doing it one way forever and ever and don't believe the computer is smarter than they are and don't feel like they need those realizations coming from the data, sure. Um, but they're going to be at a disadvantage relative to those who are using every tool at their disposal, including an AI generator, an AI uh, centric platform to make the kinds of determinations that lead to really good human decision making. Are there any, you know, emerging technologies or methodologies that you foresee having a significant impact in digital marketing strategies and outcomes? Well, I sell a product called Pearson. Yeah. Um, that is a <laughs> so yeah, subtle Pearson <laughs> yeah. plug. Yep, here we go. Indeed, I've got to, got to do it. Got yes, to do it. you have to. Uh, that takes all of the data that a marketer has and, and helps them apply it smartly. So I, I won't rehash, but tools such as that, and of course there are other companies that are doing similar, probably not identical things, um, but marketers are continually demanding that their platforms give them more insight and make that insight more actionable. And, and again, like not to beat up any marketers who are doing it sort of the old way, but click-through rate tells you nothing. Like you can't take action based upon that. Video completion rate, even cost per click, right? These are not things that have a direct one-to-one -one correlation with sales, particularly not offline in-store sales. Right. So using metrics that are um, time-tested, right? Using um, marketing methodologies um, like media mix modeling that are so um, prevalent and so ubiquitous in the offline world, bringing them to digital and then taking those insights and turning, closing that loop, turning it into you know, more desirable, more desired offline behavior by your customers. That's really what it's about. And I would expect to see more companies doing um, similar things, but you know, we're, we're the best at it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure there will be no shortage of companies trying their hand For at, sure. you know, different um, artificial intelligence products. So. For sure. Are, is there anything that marketers should be conscious of when leveraging AI within their strategies? Make sure it makes sense, right? So you can have really good AI um, or you can have AI that was not well made um, or is not really suited for the purpose that you're deploying it against. So make sure it makes sense. Um, make sure the pairing recommendations that you're getting make sense. Like I understand why someone buys a freezer and an ice chest. I don't know that it's relevant that that person also went to, you know, another store and purchased um, cookies, right? Like it's <laughs> something that, you know, it's, it's not particularly useful and not particularly relevant in predicting on uh, future behavior on um, uh, in my stores. Um, make sure that anything you're putting out there to your clients, right? So let's say an agency, um, is using AI to help optimize a client's advertising. Make sure you understand it. Like, make sure you're ready to stand and defend the decisions that were made based upon what the AI is telling you. The good news is, if you have five analysts and Excel sheets sort of pouring over the data, very difficult to get crisp, uh, direct, um, quantifiable answers out of the, the 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 first party data. If you're doing it with a machine, right, with machine learning that can either live in the cloud or on your premise as a marketer. Well, now you've got quick, deliverable, easy to understand information on why, as an agency, I made this media decision when in the past we had made that media decision. Yeah, absolutely. Do you think it's important for businesses to start leveraging AI in their marketing strategies right now? Is it something that you think it's okay for companies to wait on? Or what is your opinion on all that? You can't wait because your competitors are using it. Right. Right. So you might think I'm, I'm in a pretty niche category. I know my customers, you know, I know how to market to them, but your competitor knows better um, how to market to their customers and how to market to your customers if they're taking advantage of a tool that you're not. Um, I can't think of a single marketer use case um, that where AI uh, and analytics do not make the decision making better. Um, yeah. And so if, if anyone is sort of, you know, uh, frightened is not the right word, anybody is, is, is hesitant to jump into AI, take it slow, right? Like look at recommendations, but don't have those recommendations be automatically implemented, right? Give it the smell test, right? Make sure, again, your first party data tells a huge story about your business, but you also um, are the, uh, the source of record when it comes to your business. You know many of these things. The goal of AI is to help you make smarter decisions, not to take the decision making away from you. Right. Absolutely. So going back to a little bit about Pearson, what does Pearson's future roadmap look like 
in terms of, you know, developing it developing its technology further, you know, improving its AI for marketers, businesses. Can you give us a little insight into that? Yeah. So um, what's coming next for us? What's coming next for us is breaking into additional verticals, helping marketers who have historically been underserved by online advertising, um, really building out the omni-channel platform that we have for all the different paths that consumers are advertised to, um, and then what they're doing when they're seeing that advertising out of home is a exploding field right now. It has been for the last several years. And so tying exposures to um, out of home displays, to CTV, um, and understanding what the impact of those are versus other channels and how to optimize those channels um, is something that we are beginning to do um, in multiple different uh, categories like CTV, like out of home is coming next. Um, and then making the AI smarter and smarter and smarter and smarter. Like the good thing about um, predictive analytics is that the more data you have, the better predictions you can make, right. the better predictions you make, the better predictions you make on top of that. And then that allows you to make these ever smarter decisions. So, you know, are, is our AI perfect? No, of course not. Nobody's is. Like right. literally yeah. nobody's is. Mm -hmm. Because I can see a glow when I look at a AI generated picture and I yeah. can get a sense when I read an AI generated paragraph people are going to feel the same way about any other use of the technology. Um, so it, it really comes down to um, the individual marketer telling us like, hey, these are all really good insights, but I need these other insights too. And we're like, oh, okay, let's build it. And being a relatively small, scrappy, agile, early stage company lets us have a market, a, a client-led development effort such that if you want it as a client, well, our other clients probably want it too. So we should probably build that. That's hard when you are a sort of monolithic enterprise side vendor who takes yeah. you know, a year to sell the product and two years to implement it and you need trained experts to use it. We were built for the exact opposite use case. And if, if that means that the world's largest retailers are not um, in our ideal client profile, that's okay, because there is a very, very big mid-market of retailers who absolutely have the need and are underserved by other companies who are in the space that maybe have bigger media or uh, uh, minimums and, and maybe require more training. And um, that's really the opposite of, of how we are with our um, clients. Yeah, that's exciting. It seems like, you know, you guys have a good future roadmap to look forward to. And I'm definitely, you know, going to keep my eye out on all the th great things you guys do in the future. Thank you. So we talked a little bit about this before, but I have a question on, you know, what advice do you have for marketers just beginning experimenting with AI? Earlier, you mentioned, you know, just kind of take it slow, you know, dip your feet in a little bit. Is there anything else that you want to add to that? You're doing the right thing. You are not crazy. The AI is probably not telling you crazy things to do, <laughs> right? If it's telling you to uh, display these two products together next to each other on the shelf, um, it's based upon facts, knowledge, data, right? It's based upon your data. So everything is right there from which to make those determinations. But again, like don't don't let it, you know, grow up and murder you like, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. any other form of UI like or of AI. Like let's make sure that we're making smart decisions based upon actionable insights that are coming. Um, and if you are starting out with AI and you're sort of dipping your toe in the water, look for it to make like really low level yet important decisions. Something like, I saw the refrigerator, stop showing me refrigerator ads. That is like deceptively hard to do. It is a problem that consumers have been complaining about for years and years. Like, why are these shoes following you around the internet? Yeah. I just bought a different <laughs> pair of shoes. I just bought the same pair of shoes. Like just solving that is going to help your business by not paying money to target people who already bought the thing. Right. Right. And then you take it from there, right? Like then you do some of the more sophisticated stuff like segmentation and media mix modeling and writing and then sort of building uh, according to whatever, you know, media metrics you use, building a, a framework for you to grow your business, grow your knowledge and sort of have it be a, a, a wheel that spins and spins and spins and ultimately gets smarter and smarter and smarter. Do you have any advice for marketers who, you know, are want to or are looking to convince the higher ups, uh, you know, in the C-suite or just, you know, their boss to invest in tools that leverage AI? Do a pilot. So 
the proof is in the pudding. Um, I think we're good at what we do, but you don't have to take our word for it. <laughs> Typically, our customers begin with a one month, two month pilot um, where we say, give us give us one campaign, give us two campaigns, right? And on this first campaign, um, use whatever audience targeting you're doing today. So whether you're buying from the social networks or other, um, use whatever you're doing today, then run off and use the audiences that we generate and then see what happens. And in every case, um, I think it's literally every case, the marketer sees a ROAS improvement, sometimes a significant one, wow. upwards of four to five X yeah. um, based upon running on these audiences. And that's not to you know, denigrate audience products that the media platforms and the social platforms are doing. It's good stuff, I'm sure, or they wouldn't be you know, the social media platforms, yeah. um, but it's not your data, right? right? It's only ever going to be as good as the data you're putting in. And if you're making targeting decisions based upon an amalgam of third-party data, you know, you're, you're going to be on the right path, but are you in the right car on the train? You're really only going to get that answer if you're using your data to its fullest. Right. Absolutely. Do you have any resources that you personally use to stay up to date with, you know, the latest trends in AI or, you know, the latest tools, anything like that? I mean, you could like, Drip over an AI article, not written by AI, but about AI. Yeah, like right. Concerned. There are <laughs> so, so many um, different places where it's talked about. The marketing trades certainly are going to give you a lot of good insights on um, what other companies are doing and what you should maybe be doing. Um, some of the ad side um, resources around, well, now that I have this data, now that I have this knowledge, what do I do with it? How do I apply it? And which ad platform, which media platform should I use to actually execute the media and activate these audiences? So um, I wouldn't say there's a single, you know, one or two uh, source Bible um, for the space, but kind of keeping apprised of all the newsletters, all the, like definitely go ahead and create yourself a Google alert for marketing and AI. I and mean, you, yeah. you have to do that. Um, and then be a leader, right? So like do the pilot, do the testing, and then write a post about it. Go put on LinkedIn how we worked with, you know, unnamed uh, media data platform that begins with P and ends with N. Yeah. <laughs> and this is what happened to our ROI. This is what happened to our return on ad spend as a result. Um, the resources are out there. They're not always obvious. Um, and of course, hairson.com always has um, the latest and thought leadership positions on what's happening in our space. You hear that, folks? Pairson.com. <laughs> Pairson.com. Lewis, I have one last question for you today. And that uh -oh. is, what is one important thing you want listeners to take away from this episode? Hmm. Don't be afraid to try. Um, and in fact, be afraid not to try. So... It, it, the, the investment, both financial and logistical, in doing a pilot is really, really small, right? All we need is your data. Um, and so once we have that, we can build the model and we can start to, again, it gets better over time. But even in that first month or two months, we can show you like, hey, if you jumped into this thing with both feet, look at the insights and, and better performance you'd be getting. And whether you do it with us or you do it with somebody else, um, uh, like do it, like don't be afraid to do it. Don't be afraid to try because again, if you don't, your competitors are. And right. now where you could have had a competitive advantage, you are now disadvantaged relative to folks who are doing this. Awesome, I totally agree. Thank you so much, Lewis, for joining the show today. I learned a lot thank about you. this topic. Our listeners will, and I'm excited. This was a great episode. So thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. It's been really fun. Awesome. Thank you for listening to Modern Marketing Messages. For more information about the topic discussed today, check out the description of this episode. If you like this episode, follow the podcast wherever you listen to them to stay up to date with us. While you're at it, give us a rating and share this podcast with others. Don't forget to follow us on social media at Modern Marketing Messages. This episode is brought to you by AmericanEagle.com Studios. I'm Taylor Karg, and I'll be back with another Modern Marketing Message.